Good evening, VC. I'm Chris uh, Vinyl Piper. I suppose at the end of this video, you'll know why I'm the Vinyl Piper. I am doing the Vinyl Tag 2025 that Pretty Green Vinyl Guy has put the questions for. So I'm just going to go through those questions now. Number one, best purchase of 2024, new or old? Well, that's easy for me. The best purchase for me this year is this. This is Led Zeppelin 1 from the UK. This is the rare turquoise cover because of the lettering. Uh, it's an album, when the, when the band saw the turquoise, it was immediately recalled because they did not like the color and they went with the color that you know and love. Really clean, glossy cover. This is on the Plum Label. I've, I've always loved this album. Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You has been top of my playlist for many, many years. Your time is going to come. I love it. So with that, also in 2024, I got this. This is the U.S. first pressing. But what makes this unique is it has the brown, what do they call it? The brown and red Atlantic label, which is originally an ATCO label. And all the other ones after this came out in the green label. So this is a rare version with this label. It came out for a very short time. The very, very first U.S. pressing. So I have the first, earliest U.S. And from what I hear, the mix is the same on this, but the mastering is different and better. But I haven't compared them. And then I have this, so the U.K. and the U.S. This is my best purchase of 2024. Okay, number two, 50 years later, best album from 1974. This is an easy one, at least for me. Scorpions, Fly to the Rainbow. This is their second album, came out in 1974. The first album was Lonesome Crow in 72, and then In Trance was their third album. This came right in between it. This is a German pressing with the German orange label. I don't have a first pressing. I just recently got the first German Lonesome Crow, but I don't have a first of this, which I need. But this is my favorite album from 1974. The song Fly to the Rainbow, Speedy's Coming, They Need a Million, Fly People Fly. Really, really great Scorpions album. No, an album that defines a genre, that's easy. Because Pretty Green Vinyl Guys from Canada, I'm showing a Canadian pressing of Pink Floyd, Piper at the Gates of Dawn. This is their first album from 1966. It's got the Canadian capital label. When I think of psych, psychedelic music, I think of this album. I think of Sid Barrett, Roger Waters, Rick Wright, and Nick Mason. This came out in Canada on the Capital 6000 series. This is a stereo copy. I also have the mono copy of this. I've got the UK mono and stereo, the US mono and stereo, France, Germany. I have many, many copies of Piper at the Gates of Dawn. My name is Vinyl Piper. This is an album that defines a genre. The next one, best band from your home country. Well, this is an easy one. I imagine most people are going to pick this because it's quite common, but the 13th Floor Elevators. This is the best band out of the United States of America. This is their mono copy of Psychedelic Sounds of the, of the, of the, of the 13th Floor Elevators. This came out in 1966. This early copy, mono. This is the mono version. It's rare. The stereo version came out in 67. Rocky Erickson was the band leader. This is great psych. Really, really good. I did a video about this particular album maybe four or five months ago. I'll put the link to that in the description. But that is the best 
banned from my home country. The 13 floor elevators. Okay, an artist I miss dearly. Well, I'm sure this is going to be a common one as well. Everyone's going to think the same thing. But it's Rocky Erickson. Rocky Erickson of the 13 floor elevators. This is his first solo album, Rocky Erickson and the Aliens. This came out of the UK. This is a, from the Netherlands. It's actually a test pressing, 1980. Really great tracks. I saw Rocky Erickson numerous times before he passed. The last time I saw him, my wife and I went to Austin, Texas, maybe 2015. We rented a car and we drove to a ranch a day before Halloween. We got lost and we got there and it was dark, but it was great. There was like 50 people there and Rocky got on stage about a half hour later and we got to be right in front of him watching him play tracks. It was really great. He was old, but it was great. So I miss him a lot. Rocky Erickson, I named my, my dog after Rocky Erickson. The best live album in your collection. Well, that's another easy one. This is Pink Floyd, Umaguma. This came out in 1969. One, si one album of this is each member's contribution from the studio. And then the second album of this is taken live from 1969. This happens to be the 1970 pressing on uh, red vinyl from Japan. It's a white label promo with the Obi. This is the rarest album I have in my collection. You don't see this very often. Uh, you'll see it with the Obi and on black, but this is a white label promo. Super, super hard to come by. Your partner just dumped you. What album are you putting on now? Yep. This was real life, 1994, I was dumped. When this came out in 93, this is Mazzy Star, So Tonight That I Might See. Hope Sandoval's voice is so great. The band is great. This is the US Capitol. This is a super rare and hard to find album. I don't know why. The reissues of this don't do it justice. This is the copy that you want for sure. Um, also, the same, well, this came out in 93, but from this album in the UK, there really says Mazzy Star, Fade Into You. It's a four track EP number. This is number 868, and I think I have number like 1055. I have two of these. I'm going to, this is a VG Plus, VG copy, VG Plus cover, VG vinyl. So I'm going to keep my. VG plus, VG plus, and I'll probably sell or trade this away. But again, the partner just dumped. What album are you putting on? It is so tonight that I might see. Best sounding drums on an album. Okay, well that's easy. This is Led Zeppelin II. This is obviously their second album. This is a RL for Robert Ludwig. This is the white label promo. John Bonham was an amazing drummer. When you're comparing this with the classic records issue with a standard um, non-promo issue, you listen to the drums, you listen to the cymbals and the decay of the cymbals, and you listen to the sound and the tone of the drums. This one sounds really good, and the drumming on this is great and for me i like the song thank you a lot but best sounding drums on an album led zeppelin 2. okay favorite artist who is a member of two or more bands well <clears throat> that's easy stone gossard i'm from seattle and i knew of stone from very early on he was in green river this is Come On Down. This is their first EP from 1985. This is considered the first grunge record. First grunge on vinyl. Green River. Come On Down. He was in this band with Jeff Ament. Jeff Ament did the covers for this and so many of the things. After that band, and actually, I even forgot. I don't know why. He was in Mother Love Bone, and why do I don't have a Mother Love Bone album? I'm not sure. I skipped straight to Temple of the Dog. He was in Temple of the Dog. 
This is the European first pressing. I need the U.S. first pressing of this. And also Mother Love Bone, I have in the shelves there the album Apple, their full length album. I need that U.S. version of that. I have uh, one from the Netherlands, but I don't have a U.S. copy of Apple. But so he was in Green River, Mother Love Bone, Temple of the Dog. And then after that, he was in Pearl Jam, Stone Gossard, such a good guitarist. He is my favorite artist who is in a member of two or more bands. Green River, Mother Love Bone, Temple of the Dog, and Pearl Jam. You found a bag of weed. What are you going to listen to? Well, I just got in a banger, a really heavy hitter here. And this is called the CA Quintet Trip Through Hell. This is a, a grail. This is a super, super, very rare, very expensive on candy floss on the label. This came out in 1969. Super trippy. It's got played around with stereo effects, a really good drum solo where it's bouncing back and forth between the left channels. This is what you would use smoke pot and you would go listen to this. This is really hard to come by. I just got it in the past month, and I've been looking for this for a long time. You can, you can get this on Sundays. This is the Sundays on red vinyl, and it's, it's really good. I've compared the two, and they're actually, they hold up very well. And there's a 1996 version that has actually rare, tra rare tracks. I would suggest getting the 1996 version. An album from the 1980s that you still listen to. Okay, let's. Nirvana Bleach. I grew up in Seattle. I love Nirvana. I love Kurt Cobain. I love all their music. This is my favorite album of all their music over Nevermind, Incesticide, everything. This is the US white vinyl version. It also came out in black. This is the very first pressing. It came out with an insert and a poster. I have the insert, but I don't have the poster. And so the poster has been on my want list for a very, very long time. I listen to this often. I have probably 10 versions. I'd listen to this probably more than I should. It's a, an expensive album, but it sounds great. Love it. Rest in peace, Kurt Cobain. An artist whose political stance has soured you. What's that guy, that dick from the Smith? Morrissey, oh, I hate that guy, but this is not who I chose. I've got a bunch of Morrissey Smith's originals that I need to get rid of because I just don't listen to them. I don't like him. I really like the music, but the second I hear his voice, it drives me crazy. But for this, I chose Van Morrison, Astro Weeks. I love this album. I got into this album in high school. I just realized I don't even have an OG. Um, I don't like his politics. I've seen him at the Hollywood Bowl a few times. He's kind of a dick. He's his stance on co. I don't. We don't see eye to eye at all. I don't like Van Morrison anymore, but I love his music. This is the 2009. This is 2009. Pressed at RTI. Kevin Gray did this. This sounds really good. Jason Rojas wouldn't like it because Kevin Gray mastered this, but he'd be wrong. This is an extremely well done version of this album. Show a favorite record label. Well, that would be Sub Pop. This is Nirvana's first single, Love Buzz, on Sub Pop. This is actually a, a bootleg copy of it. This is the original. I'm careful not to open it. I don't take it out too much. Another rare item. I've had this three times. This is number 373. I've had this for quite a while. I got this when it came out 
but I wrote my name on it, threw it around. This was December of 88. Uh, but Sub Pop, when, when I first heard them, they had a singles club. So I signed up and I, was, I got Sub Pop Singles Club for a few months and then I canceled. I didn't have the money. But now as I was older, maybe 10 years, no, 15 years ago, I made my mission to acquire all the Sub Pop singles from their volume one, two, and three. So I have all their singles. This is a standout one. Love Buzz from 1988. This is Sub Pop 23. This is the Flaming Lips Sub Pop 28. This is a few minutes, a few months later. They do a copy of the Sonic Strychnine. Very punk, little psyche, but strychnine, flaming lips. I love the flaming lips. And that is my Sub Pop. They also, Soundgarden was on the label, Smashing Pumpkin had a single, Mud Honey, Green River, lots of artists have been on the Sub Pop label. A run of three great singles. That's easy. Everyone's probably going to do this and pick this as well. Pink Floyd, Arnold Lane. This is the UK picture sleeve from 1967 on Columbia. Demonstration. This is their first one. What a great first single to start with. The second single would be See Emily Play. I don't have this UK picture sleeve. I've looked for it for years and I've just never come across it. It's super rare, especially clean. I have this from France and Sid Barrett did the artwork. This is from the Netherlands. See Emily Play. And I do have a, I do have, this is from Brazil. I have many different copies without a picture sleeve from different countries. And their third single in the UK was Apples and Oranges. I don't have the UK picture sleeve of Apples and Oranges. This is the French picture sleeve of Apples and Oranges. I have, I did a video on about six months ago about my five top Arnold Lane picture sleeves. I will leave a link in the description. And a few months ago, I did a video on the top five C. Emily plays in my collection, and I will leave that link as well. A record store day purchase that you actually consistently listen to. So I immediately went and I got out my Pink Floyd, their first recordings. This is record store day, 2015. And then I realized I never opened it. I, I, I didn't play it, so I'd be lying. So then I went and got my Piper at the Gates of Dawn. This came out in 2018 on mono. And I realized this is sealed as well. And I never listened to this. I ended up downloading it or something. And so this would be, if I would listen to these, these would be my favorite ones that I come back to and listen to all the time. But I've never opened them, and I don't know why I will open them, because I need to listen to these. So that question doesn't really help me too much. You can be reincarnated as any artist, dead or alive. Who's it going to be? Now, that's an easy one. Sid Barrett. Sid Barrett was the founding member of Pink Floyd. They kind of, they kind of not pushed him out of the band, but he left in January of 1968. In 1967, he released a solo single called Octopus. This is the UK on Harvest. They spelt his last name incorrectly. So I'd be reincarnated to Sid Barrett. I would not take the acid that his friends gave him 
and hopefully I'd be a better businessman and maybe I would start a new band with members of the soft machine. Best three lines in a song. Well, because Pretty Green Vinyl Guy is from Canada, I'm gonna use my Canadian version of A Sasha Full of Secret. This is the 600 series, same as the Piper of the Gates of Dawn I showed earlier, the stereo copy. And the last track on here is called Jug Band Blues. This is the last track that Sid Barrett was on um, of Pink Floyd before he left. And those words are, he was like foreshadowing the future. It's awfully considerate of you to think of me here, and I'm most obliged to you for making it clear that I'm not here. He goes on to question who might be singing this song if he's not here. It's, it's really interesting. If you don't know this song or even this album, pick it up. It's their second album from 1968. An album you never tire of. A soundtrack from the motion picture more. Pink Floyd did that soundtrack. They did this in 1969. This happens to be a Japanese red vinyl white label promo. I play this over and over. I have many copies of this album. Probably I stream it more nowadays, but it, this has so many different moods. It's, it calms me down. This is a good Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon. Listen, I did, I think back in May, I did a video covering this album and all my different pressings of this particular album. I'll leave that link in the description with the other links. Okay, last question. Share your favorite VC channel. Well, that's going to be tough to do, but I will say the first one is Psyche Derek. I'll leave all the links to these five or six in the description. Psyche Derek is like a young guy who has so much psychedelic albums. He has such a great knowledge. He lives somewhere in the Midwest, but he's turned me on to so many albums I never thought I wanted. I think the CA Quintet that I finally got, I first heard about it through him. The next channel is Norman Masloff, Mazzy. He has a channel which probably most of you know. He's got thousands of videos, but I love his stories. He tells stories of, it's the music of his life, all these records he grew up with, and I really just love how he talks about music. He remembers the details, and I don't remember details at all, and he's really good. Vinyl from the underground, Crazy Jimmy. Crazy Jimmy should have way more subs than he has. This guy knows psych. He knows 90s. He, he Most of the time when he's showing a video, I've never heard of 90% of the artists. And the other 10%, I love a lot. So Crazy Jimmy. Jason Rojas. He's got a channel. He's kind of trolly, but he's with his channel, he likes to compare OGs and current reissues. He's got a DJ setup where as he's playing the track on both albums, he goes back and forth so you could hear the differences. And then when he finishes the song, he talks about what he hears. And then he asks, what are you hearing? And he tells you to wear a headset. And I think it's a really interesting way to compare two different pressings. And the last one is Zepp Pearl. This guy loves Led Zeppelin like I do, loves Pearl Jam like I do, and the grunge his enthusiasm on his videos is infectious. His taste in music is great. I, I, we, we see eye to eye on most of the music. So check out all these channels. They're really great. And that is my Vinyl Tag 2025. Thank you.